toes apart, or sorry, take your knees wide and let your big toes touch behind you. Sink your hips back towards your heels. Start to walk your hands forward. Find a very active child's pose here. So try to grip into the mat with your fingertips and imagine that you could drag your hands back towards your body energetically. Let your uh, spine become very long, sending your crown of your head away from your tailbone. Maybe your forehead drops down to the mat. We're gonna take about five breaths here. Nice long spine. Sort of letting your hips sink a little bit closer to the mat each time. Start to wake up the shoulders by pressing into the hands a little bit more. One more breath here. And then as you inhale, I'll turn sideways so you can see me. Just walk both of your hands towards the left side of your mat. Keep your hands about shoulder distance apart. And take a nice long spine on your inhalation, exhale, fold forward. This is good for you, work here. If you want a little bit more stretch for the side body, maybe you take that um, left hand and cross it over your right. I'm actually going to switch sides to make sure that I mirror you guys. Nice, draw back through your left hip. It's really stretch and engage and elongate the side body. Final breath. Inhale to bring yourself halfway up. Walk your hands all the way to the other side of the mat. So I think I'm mirroring you guys now. So we're gonna take both hands to the left side of the mat. Keep your hands shoulder distance apart. Lengthen the spine on your inhalation, fold on your exhalation. Again, if you want a little bit more, you can cross your right hand on top of your left and really get a little extra space in the rib cage. Take two more breaths here. Maybe you draw back through your right hip just a smidgen more to get more space. And as you exhale, come onto your hands and knees. I'll turn sideways again so that you guys can see me. And we're going to thread the needle. So we want to take our knees so that they're a little bit wider than our hips. Let our toes touch, like a little baby setup for a child's pose. Bring your right, left, <laughs> right hand to the center of the mat. Inhale, left hand up. Exhale, thread the needle, taking that hand under your right side. Let your left shoulder rest onto the mat. You can walk your right hand above your head and take the stretch in the shoulders as well as your side body. Take two more breaths here. Really lengthen your spine, bring your tailbone away from the body. And then to come out, bring your right hand down to the mat, lift slowly away from that left shoulder. Take the left hand back up to the ceiling and then exhale it down to the mat. Same thing, other side. Inhale your right arm up this time. Exhale, thread the right arm under the left, take your right shoulder down to the mat. You can stay here with your left fingers tinted onto the ground or take those left fingertips overhead. Notice if your hips have shifted off towards your left side, draw the hips back to the midline, a little bit closer to the right side of the body. Take a few breaths here. Creating lots of space in the side bodies in preparation for all of our twists. One more full breath here. Nice. Then you can use that left hand to help yourself back up. Watch that little right hand as it comes up to the ceiling. And then exhale back down to your mat. We're going to come into rabbit pose next. So for this, you can bring your knees together. Let your toes touch. 
From there, you can reach your hands back to take hold of the outer edges of your feet. Take your forehead towards your knees and round forward. Now imagine your forehead can come to your knees even if it's not actually happening. But what we want to focus is on pressing that mid back up towards the ceiling. One more full breath here. I love how I did all these twisted and folding poses where you can't even hear me talk like right in the beginning of class. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then as you exhale, take those arms back out in front of you. We're going to come into some tiger curls now. So we'll take the knees so that they are touching in the middle of the body. And our hands will come so that they're right under the shoulders. Switch your weight into your right knee so that you can lift your leg out behind you. Keep all five toes down to the mat. If this is good, work here. If you want a little bit extra, maybe you take your right arm out in front of you. Inhale, lift. Lengthen the spine, use your glutes to bring your heel a little bit closer to the ceiling. And just pause here for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, bring your knee and your elbow towards one another. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, curl in. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, curl in. Twice more, really extending with every lift, bringing your navel towards the ceiling with every curl. Really exaggerate those movements. And then take hands and knees to the mat, and we'll switch sides. So this time your right leg goes back, right leg lifts. Use your glutes to lift the leg just a little bit higher without externally rotating in that hip. You can take the left arm forward, pause and lift for five, Four, three, two, one, and then bring it in. Five times. Notice if you're relying on your momentum for this movement. If you are, really try to use the core muscles to create every lift and extension and every curl. Really take advantage of the glutes for the leg lift. Final time here. Nice. And then we'll release. And we're going to come into something that might look a little weird if you haven't done it before. But come lying down onto your right side. Let's slide this out of the way a little bit. So you want to come lying onto the floor onto your right side and take both of your hands overhead. I hope I'm still in the frame. Now, for balance sake, it may feel good to take your top leg behind you a little bit, but in a perfect world, we'd stack our ankles. So as you inhale, press your right hip down into the mat. Try to lift both of your hands away. Rather than using your shoulders and neck for the lift, think about compressing this side of your obliques to get that lift to happen. Exhale, lower down. We're going to do that for nine more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Really use the obliques to help the lift. And exhale down. There you go. Seven. Six, five, notice if you're using your neck and shoulders, try not to, four, three, two, <laughs> one, and release. Just take your hands into a little pillow for your head and pause. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. You can just flip over to your left side, but I'm going to switch so that you guys can not look at my butt the whole time I'm doing this. So we have the ankle stack, knee stack, hip stack. Arms are together overhead, shoulders are stacked. Again, you're welcome to take that top foot behind you if you'd like. That helps with the balance. Bring your upper ribs in, activate your core muscles, and really focus on this area rather than your neck and shoulders as you crunch. Inhale to come up. Exhale down. Notice if that feels good. Some of us will generally want to exhale on the contraction. That's completely natural. There you go. We have six, 
five, four, <laughs> falling, <laughs> three, two, one. Nice. Roll onto the belly, create a little pillow for the head, pause. Beautiful. Let's come up. I'm going to switch back to the front of my mat now that we are going to be facing the side. And we're going to come into a downward facing dog. It's the first down dog of the practice, so feel free to keep your knees bent. You can always keep your knees bent, actually, but especially for this one, it's the very first one. Maybe pedal out your dog, walk it a little bit, shift from one knee to the other. A little side work is always good. So maybe you switch to the outer edges of your feet and just let your hips really pull towards one side. Take maybe three to five more breaths for whatever movement feels good for you. We wanna get into the space gently, mindfully. Mm, final breath here. Nice. And then let's all come back to center. Bring your gaze towards your shins. Bring your ears in line with your biceps. Take a moment to press your L-shaped, uh, your <laughs> index finger and your thumb down into the mat to lengthen and elongate the spine. Now go ahead and take your big toes and bring them together. Inhale, bring your right leg up to the ceiling. Exhale, arch your back, round your shoulders, bring your knee to your nose, and hold there. Five counts for five, four, three, two, one. Take that right foot, place it between the knees. One big step, lots of little steps, it doesn't matter. And then let that left knee come down to the back. From there, we want to come into a little low lunge. So we're going to inhale to bring our arms up. Exhale, stack your ribs over your hips and then shift your hips forward. We're not quite coming into like the deepest back bend ever. We want to focus on opening up this hip flexor first. Drag your front foot towards your back knee. See if you can sink just a little bit deeper. A few breaths here. Draw the shoulder blades together. Pull the ribs in. Beautiful. You're going to take that right hand, bring it down towards your right knee or your right thigh. And then we're just going to take a little arch to the side. So I'm going to turn sideways. It's easier to see that way. But you're coming into your lunge, and then you're just reaching and extending that left arm up and creating a side stretch. All right? So we'll take a few breaths there. The more that you take the back bend out of the posture, like rather than doing this, Bring your ribs and your hips together, and you'll start to feel maybe more activation in your side. One more breath here. Then release your hands down to the mat and step back down your facing dog. Mm -hmm. Let that feel good. Sort of notice any differences between both sides of the body here. Then step your big toes together. Inhale, lift your right foot up this time. Exhale, knee to nose, and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Bring that foot down between both of your hands. Put your back knee down. Find your low lunge. Again, we're keeping our chest fairly elevated here, hips pressed forward. Look down at your left leg. See if you can see your left big toe. If you can, great. If not, go ahead and shift your knee a little bit towards the pinky edge side of your foot. Maybe you sink a little bit deeper. And then we're going to take that left hand to the left thigh. Inhale to reach the right arm up. Exhale, slight side bend. Keep the right hip low and keep drawing the right hip forward. Nice. Take one more full breath here. And then use your exhalation to bring both hands down to the mat and find your downward facing dog. Beautiful. We're going to take a similar sequence and we're going to bring it into our high lunge this time. 
So bring your big toes together. Inhale, take your right leg up. Exhale, bring that right foot forward between the hands. High lunge. Inhale to come all the way up to standing. Exhale, sink down a little bit lower into your lunge. Take a few breaths here in your high lunge. Really, this time focusing on your shoulder blades. Draw those shoulder blades together. Straighten the arms. If your shoulders are still a little tight this morning, just make your V wider. Beautiful. On your next breath, bring your hands to your heart. Prayer pose. Take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Lengthen, elongate your spine, take the crown of the head away from your tailbone, and then just gently use your elbow to encourage the twist. Notice if your left hip sank down like that, if it did, lift the left hip up and right in line with the right. Take two more fat breaths here. Nice. And then use your exhalation to take both hands back towards the mat. We're going to lift that right foot away from the ground. Let it hover again. Five, four, three, two, one. Shoot it out to the left side of the mat and start to lower down onto your right hip. Ooh. <laughs> so we're here with the back foot. You can come onto the inner edge of your back foot. The front foot, you're on the pinky edge. In a perfect world, you want to have your foot in line with your hips, and your other leg is making like a 90 degree angle. For some of us, this is a big twist. So we want to come up onto our hands and just focus on lifting the chest. Keep both of your legs very active. If you want a little bit more, you can come down onto your forearms. But honestly, I don't actually feel more of a stretch this way. I feel like when my arms are up and I'm really pressing into my right arm, I can get more leverage. But some people feel that this is more intensity and sensation if you're going for intensity and sensation. So we're going to be here a couple more breaths. Play with both options. See which one feels good to you. Notice if you're feeling this mostly in the leg, the hip, or the side body. And just observe without any judgment. One more breath here. And then using your inhalation, take your hands back under your shoulders, come onto the sole of your back foot, begin to press up with an exhalation. Use control to try to lift that right leg away from the mat. Oh, bend the knee, take it back into three-legged dog. Exhale that leg down. Bring it line in the center of your mat if you've shifted a little, and we'll take that same sequence to the other side. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, knee to nose and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Place the foot between the hands. Find your high lunge. The arms are up, palms face one another. Nice deep bend into your left knee. Left knee tracks over your center toes and is stacked more or less above your ankle. Start to press your right leg away from the floor. See if you can make it just a little bit straighter. Nice. Take two more breaths here. Maybe sink a little bit deeper. And then we're going to bring our hands to prayer. Take that right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Lengthen the spine on an inhalation, exhalation, twist. Press firmly into the mound of your right big toe. That's really going to help you with stability. Power up your back leg. Keep that active too. And start to lift your right hip away from the floor. For five, four, Three, two, and one. This is the fun part. So we take our hands down to frame that front foot, lift the right knee away from the floor, and hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Shoot it out towards the right side of the mat, lower down onto that left hip. Oh man, <laughs> this side definitely feels different than the other. So the legs are roughly in a 90 degree angle. I'm pressing firmly into my left hand to help encourage that twist without overdoing it. And I'm keeping the chest high or coming onto the forearms. With every inhalation, see if you can grow a little taller. With every exhalation, see if you can twist just a little bit more. <laughs> Take two more breaths. All this twisting is good, I promise you. It's going to pay off. 
So we'll take the hands under the shoulders on an inhalation. And then as you exhale, draw that right leg back in for five, four, three, two, one. Send that left leg up, three-legged dog. And then exhale, bring the foot down. Similar sequence, a little different variations. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, knee to nose. And just step it down this time. No countdown. <laughs> We're going to come into our high lunge. And sink nice and low. Use your next exhalation to take your arms out like a T, nice and wide. And just rotate your whole upper body towards the right side of the mat. See how far you can rotate. Recommit to the bend in the front knee. I know I cheated and came out of mine. And then from there, take your hands to prayer. Bring your elbow to the outside of the right knee. Work in your prayer twist or open your wings. Taking your left hand down to the mat, right arm up to the ceiling. Press firmly into your arm and your leg. Just kind of use that as support. Final breath. Then we're going to take both hands down to frame the front foot. And let's just take it right back to down dog this time with a three-legged dog. Beautiful. Same thing, other side. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, knee to nose. Just a quick little pause there and then step it through. Find your high lunge. And take a few breaths in your high lunge. Get all the foundational points nice and steady. Your back heel is stacked over your ball of your back foot, so your arch is powerful and being opened. Arms come into a T. Rotate the upper body towards your left. This really gives you an idea of how much you're using your elbow for leverage when you come into twists. Um, not necessarily bad if you are. You just want to be really mindful if you're doing that so you don't take it too far. Hands to prayer, elbow to the outside of the knee. Stance is a little wide, but shorten that up. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist. Work here or go ahead and open your wings. Lift the right hip away from the mat. Lengthen the crown of the head all the way down to your back ankle. Nice long line of energy. Two more breaths here. Maybe you sink a little bit deeper in the hips. And then we're going to take both hands down to the mat. Lift that leg. Take it back to three-legged dog. And then we'll settle into our down dog. Nice. Let's come into a child's pose. So take your knees wide. Big toes come together. Sink your hips back to your heels. Reach the arms forward. This is also a good opportunity to grab some water if you want a little bit of that. Um, you can also towel off if you need to. <clears throat> Take one or two more breaths here. I'm going to make sure that I get in all the fun stuff that I have planned for you guys. <laughs> Then use your next inhalation to come up into your hands and knees. Find your down dog just as a transition. We're going to start to tiptoe the feet towards the front of the mat. Try to keep your legs straight as long as you can. This is going to encourage you to use a lot of your core to round yourself in and get a little bit more length for the hamstrings. Once you get to the front of the mat, take your feet hip distance apart and ragdoll, please. Maybe take hand to opposite elbow. Just let the upper body hang really heavy. Traction the feet apart from one another so that you could like rip the mat in half if you wanted to, just using the muscles from your hips through your feet. One more breath here. Then take your hands down to your mat and start to bend into your right knee. You maybe keep your right hand down on the ground, lift and open towards the right, left side of the mat. Remember if you're sort of rocking all your weight back into your heels like I was to try to balance the weight evenly between all four corners of your front foot. Exhale to release. Inhale, other side. Beautiful. 
Press firmly through that straight leg. Really empower the leg to get all that you can out of this twist. Exhale that right hand down to the mat. Take your hands to your hips, elbows to the ceiling. Come up with a flat back. Nice. All right, so a couple standing poses. Get out of the arms for a little bit. We're going to begin with our feet together and let your middle toes face forward. So for some of us, that might mean there's a small like gap in between the heels, and that's okay. Take your hands to your hips. Shift your weight into your right foot. Inhale to lift the left knee in line with your left hip. Notice that the ears, shoulders, and hips and ankle aim to stop. And then with your next exhalation, take that left foot, bring it all the way to the back of the mat. Find a high lunge. Sink your hips low. Knee comes forward. Once you find your high lunge, take your arms out behind you with your palms facing down, shoulder blades together. Hand up the hips and create a nice long line of energy from the crown of the head all the way to your back foot. Inhale to come up, arms up. Exhale, take those airplane arms back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back. Maybe you start to shift your weight forward into that right foot. Find a warrior three with your arms and airplane wing. One big step or lots of little steps, yogi's choice. Nice. Final breath here. Release that left foot down to meet its neighbor and come up to standing. Beautiful. Same thing, other side. Shift your weight into your left foot this time. Inhale the right foot up. Exhale, take that right foot all the way. Oh, sorry, we held this for a few breaths on the other side. So let's take a few breaths here. Keep your core engaged. Pull that navel back towards your spine. Rip your ribs, ribs together. It's a rough morning, guys. It's so hard to talk. Now we can take that right leg all the way to the back of the mat. Find our high lunge. Sink deeply into your left knee. Nice. You know where we're going with this. So we're going to exhale to take the arms back, hinge at the hips, bring your weight over your front leg. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, arms back. Shoulders engaged, pull your uh, thumbs and pinkies to the ceiling. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, airplane. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to airplane. Final time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to airplane, shift your weight into that left foot, find your warrior three. Use your big toe to help pull it up towards the ceiling. And then use an exhalation to release your right foot down, come up with a flat back. Nice. So we're going to come into kind of building onto that a little bit more. Bring big toes together. Middle toes face forward, hands to hips. Shift your weight into your right foot. Inhale the left knee up. Take a few breaths here. Really root down firmly through all four corners of your standing foot. Maybe straighten and extend the leg. Both hips are forward, shoulders are forward. Try not to counterbalance by leaning back. Exhale, start to sweep your left leg back, bend into your left knee. Think about bringing your heel to your head. Your chest stays lifted. You're really squeezing in with that left hamstring. And think about like lifting your heel all the way to the back of the head. Probably not going to happen in most of our bodies, but that's the activation we want in the back body. Shoulders are proud and open for five, four, three, two. Try not to cramp up. Step to the back of the mat. High lunge. Beautiful. We're going to take this high lunge. We're going to turn it into a warrior two, opening our hips and shoulders to the long edge of the mat. Bring your arms parallel to the floor and make sure that your left arm's not hanging out back there. They're both level to the ground, more or less. Sink deeply into that right knee. Take your gaze forward. Beautiful. A few more breaths here. Awesome. 
So now we're going to come into a variation of reverse warrior. Release your left fingertips down to your back leg or let them wrap behind your low back. Take that right arm, bring it back behind your head. Press your head into your hand and then inhale to lift your right elbow up to the, shoulder, to the ceiling. Keep sinking into your front knee. Reach, reach, reach that elbow up towards the sky. Beautiful. And then to come out of this, we're going to release the bind of the hand if you took it. See your warrior two. Take your hands to your hips. Walk that back foot in just a little bit. Rotate on the ball of the foot and step forward. Awesome. Same thing, other side. Inhale to bring your right knee up. Just a few breaths here. You're also welcome to straighten and extend that right leg. Now we're going to sweep that right leg back, take your heel, bring it towards the back of your head, keep your chest lifted, fire up that back body, make it count. Nice. From there, step all the way to the back of the mat, find your warrior two. Aim to keep that big toe within sight on the inside of your left foot. Draw your shoulder blades together behind you so that even your arms are super active here. Your feet are dragging towards one another for two more breaths. Super strong in the legs. And then we're going to take that reverse warrior variation. Whatever you did on side one, feel free to repeat that here if it serves your body. Final breath here. Then we're going to pass through our warrior two. Use that as a transition to step to the front of our mat. And then we'll come down to the floor. All right, just a smidgen of core before we hop into our arm balance. So we want to come lying down onto the back. And we're going to send both of our hands up towards the ceiling. Flex your hands, pull your fingertips back towards your face. Press your navel into the ground. Really press the low back into the ground. Start to lift the knees slowly. Maybe you take your knees towards your elbows. Now, if this is good for you, work here. If you want a little bit more, you're going to start to pull your shoulders away from the ground. Press your navel and that little midsection of your ribs into the ground. So this is basically crow pose on your back. Release. We're going to do that same thing, and we're going to hold it for about five to seven breaths. So go ahead and bring your arms up, press into the ceiling, draw your knees in towards your elbows. Start to hollow out the belly space as you lift your shoulders away from the ground. Think about bringing your knees even into your triceps and your armpits if you can, and hold for five, four, three, so hard to talk when doing this. Two, one. So that's curl on your back. I actually find that to be challenging just in a different way. So now we're going to come into a side curl on our back. This is an option that you're welcome to repeat when we're doing the arm balance if you're not arm balancing today. So you're going to bring the hands up, bend your knees, and this time bring your knees together. Take both of your knees to the outside of your left elbow. If this is good for you, pause here. If you want a little bit more, think about doing like a cat pose on the ground. Pull the navel towards the ground, lift the shoulders away from the ground, pull in. Think about drawing your knees towards your left armpit for five, four, three, two, one, and release. Other side. <laughs> Arms up, palms to the ceiling. Imagine this is your floor. Take your knees together, press your navel back towards the ground, start to lift the toes. Take both of your knees to the outside of your right elbow, maybe even draw it closer towards your armpit. Press your navel more into the ground, lift the shoulders away, and breathe for five, four, three, two, one. Release. Nice. All right. Arm balance fun. So the point of that exercise.
exercise was A, to get you familiar with how that shape just feels in your body, but B, to show you just how much you need to like pull the core in and like shorten that distance between your hips and your ribs. You're really compressing here, creating a lot of space in the back body as well as the side in which you are leaning, right? Or the side opposite of which way you're leaning. So we're just gonna do that same thing. If you have a block or like a thick book or anything that's tall and stable, you can grab that for the first pass of this exercise. If not, don't worry about it. It's not essential, but it can be really helpful. So I'm gonna take my block and bring it so that it is parallel to the short edge of my mat. <laughs> now I'm gonna come to a cute little crouching position on my block. So it's cute because it's like a little, little baby bird before you go into all your crowing. So I'm coming onto the balls of my feet. And actually, no, I lied to you. Um, for visibility's sake, I'm gonna turn it so that it's parallel to the long edges of the mat. That way you can see what I'm doing. All right, so from here, just a balance on a block or something this small, I really have to squeeze my legs together. Squeeze the knees, squeeze the thighs. If you can squeeze your ankles, great. Go ahead and do that too. So this gives you an idea of how much activation you wanna keep in your legs. Next, we're gonna take both of our, we're gonna twist, lengthen the spine on an inhalation, exhale, take both of your hands to the outside of your right knee. I'm mirroring you, so let's do left knee. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so both of your hands are to the outside of your left knee. Now, I have long arms, so it's a little bit easier for me to place my hands closer to the ground. But on a block, it might be more challenging, which means you gotta lean forward a little more. Trust that your hands are going to catch you. Now, it's, the key is to press your elbow into your knee and to create a shelf on your tricep. So we're gonna rotate our elbows so that they both face forward, bend the elbows in, like chaturanga arms, and just start to shift your heart and your weight forward into your hands. Now, you notice I have chaturanga arms. Most of my weight is already balanced on both of my elbows, so it's super convenient if I maybe want to lift my top foot. Maybe I want to lift my left foot. Maybe I keep squeezing those feet together and they both lift together and lower down. Now pause, come back to center, and start to think about how you felt doing that. Was the hesitation coming forward, bringing your face so close to the ground? Were you feeling a lot of pressure in your hands or your wrists? We're gonna address some of that as we come into our practice side two on the block. So I'm gonna switch the block over just a little, give me some more space. So let's say that you were hesitant about putting the weight into your hands. Think about gripping your fingertips into the mat and dragging your fingertips together. That's not gonna happen because you have weight in your hands, but it does help to open your carpal tunnel and release any like negative sensations that you might be feeling there. So squeeze the legs together. Inhale to lift. Exhale, take both of your hands to the outside of your knee. Think about doing that dragging motion, right? Take some of that weight out of your wrist. Chattering the arms, lean forward. Dragging the fingers, dragging the fingers. Now you're here. Like, oh, my face is so close to the floor. Guess what? That means it's not gonna hurt very much if you fall. <laughs> Take the heart forward a little bit more, shift forward, press the floor away from you. Press, press, press away. Maybe lift your top foot, maybe lift your bottom foot. Squeeze both legs in towards one another. And then release. Okay, now personally, I find using the block to be a little bit harder, um, but if you want to use the block for the second pass, please feel free to do so. If you wanna try it without the block, we're going to go into that now. Alright, same thing, other side. So we're going to start off in our crouching position. We're going to inhale to get a lot of length. Exhale, take both hands to the outside of our left leg. Squeeze the knees in, find your chaturanga arms, and come up onto the balls of your feet. Hinge forward. Send your face inches away from the ground. When your upper body starts to lower, your lower body starts to lift automatically. But we're not going to collapse because we're pressing into both of those hands. We're dragging our fingertips in towards our palm. We're pressing the floor away, and we're just flying. We're just hanging out here, guys. That's what we're doing. And we're gonna take it back down, and we're gonna try it on the other side. Final pass of this. If you nail it, awesome. If you're working towards it, still awesome. You're doing all the good work to get there. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Squeeze the legs together. 
Find your strong Chaturanga foundation. Come up onto the toes. Send your heart forward. Send your gaze forward. Don't look at your hands. They're still there. Extend, extend, extend forward through the head. And then come back down. Nice. So come into just a kneeling position. Maybe take your palms together, interlace your fingers, bring your forearms together, and we're just going to make some little wrist circles. You guys did really good work. I love the uh, level of creativity and the level of adventure you have just to even try this stuff. I think it's a really great way to like show yourself how powerful, powerful and brave you are, you know, with taking kind of minimal risks. You're just on your mat at your house. Like, who cares if you topple over or something? Like, you're finding your space to be creative. That's awesome. Switch the interlace of your hands. More wrist circles. Beautiful. We're going to counterbalance a little bit of that, uh, punching and rounding that we did. Let's come into a sphinx pose to start. So come down onto your elbows, elbows directly under your shoulders. Go ahead and lengthen the legs out behind you. See how that feels on the body. If it's too much of a back bend here, just take your elbows forward a bit so that you alleviate some of the back bend. Press your pubic bone into the ground, straighten and fire up the legs. Think about dragging your chest between your shoulder blades. Strong and proud in the front body. A few breaths here. Nice. Exhale, release. Take your forehead down to your hands. We're going to take a second pass our back bend here. So maybe you take both of your hands just slightly in front of your shoulder blades. Let me scoot more into my mat. Lengthen the legs, press the shoelace side of your foot down into the mat until your knees lift. Lift those kneecaps, activate your quadriceps. Then start to add a little bit more weight into your hands. Keep dragging your heart forward, sending your chest forward, and keep your elbows in tight to the body. Chin comes parallel to the floor. If you can straighten your arms, great, but this wasn't really a back bending class, so if you're not warm enough for that, it's completely cool. Keep your shoulder blades engaged, send your collarbone forward. Keep the lift in the upper spine, so you're still really using your back muscles and not just relying on your back flexibility. Exhale, release, take your forehead to your hands. Take a moment just to come to a seat. We did so much curling in and curling in. So our hip flexors probably have gotten a little bit on the tight side. So we're just gonna come into like a monkey twist to help lengthen that out. So starting from your tabletop, step your right foot forward. Let those hips sink down and forward. Just let it be really dramatic here. So maybe this feels good. If this is good for you, work here. If you want a little bit more, bend into your left knee, send your left foot up to the ceiling. Work here or reach back with your right hand, take hold of the outside of your left foot and just start to open your heart towards the right side of your mat. Now, if that's good, work here. You can also take your heel and glue together and then send both of them down and forward. Draw back through your right shoulder, so maybe you take your gaze up to the ceiling behind you. Exhale to release. Same thing, other side. So we're going to take our left foot forward this time. Sink the hips down and forward towards your left heel. Work here or bend into your right knee. Work here or reach back, take hold of the outer edge of your right foot using your left hand. Or Bring your hips back, glute and heel touch, sink that hip down and forward, start to open and rotate your chest towards the left side of your mat. Just kind of bringing a little lift, sorry, a little length into the hip 
flexors after all that curling in that we've done. And release. Awesome. So we're getting to that great part of class where we're just gonna like lay down and chill. We're doing really good on time. Um, so we're gonna go into our twist. We're gonna take our Shavasana. And before we get into Shavasana, I just wanna let you know that since you're probably practicing at home, if you want to extend the Shavasana and go straight into a meditation, please feel free to do so. Like, just ignore me when I call you out of Shavasana. But for those of us who, you know, have an engagement and we sort of need that hour mark, I'll just let you know. So let's come out down onto our back. And maybe you take your knees to the ceiling, bring your soles of the feet down to the mat. Shift your hips just one inch off towards the right. Let both of your knees fall to the left. If it feels okay on your shoulders, take your arms into cactus arms so your elbows are in line with your shoulders and your palms face up towards the ceiling. This could feel kind of nice because all that crow work calls this to like really bring a lot of space between the shoulders so this kind of helps to counterbalance that. Take about seven to 10 breaths here just to let ourselves begin to prepare for Shavasana. Maybe drop that right hip a little bit closer to the front edge of your mat, just really lengthening out the sides of the body. Inhale to bring both knees up towards the ceiling. Find center of your mat, just pause for a second. Notice any responses from your body here. And then we'll take it into the other side. So both hips go towards the left side, both knees fall to the right side. If you're in the cactus arms and that's working for you, continue to work here. About seven breaths. Notice if your ears worked there or your shoulders worked your way up to the ears. Just kind of drop the shoulders back down the back again. Final breath. And then use your core to bring those knees back towards center, align the hips towards center, and I invite you to take the next, I don't know, let's say seven to ten breaths for any other postures that you might want before you settle into Shavasana. Um, we didn't do a ton of inverting today, so an inversion might feel good. Maybe you want to take your legs up the wall if you're near a wall space at your home, or maybe you come into a shoulder stand. Um, I'll demonstrate waterfalls. So for those of you who have a block or a book nearby, it's kind of like a supported bridge meets a supported shoulder stand. So come onto our back, press the soles of the feet into the mat, and just take your block and sit it under your sacrum. And then you can press the shoulder blades down into the mat so that they're nice and flat. And then just lift both of your legs up to the ceiling. Press the soles of the feet up to the ceiling as if you could stand on it. And just take a few breaths here. But again, any inversion that your body is calling for is completely welcome. If you feel that your hands, your wrists, and shoulders are kind of warm, then maybe you take like a headstand or handstand if you'd like to practice that. I like to end the class with a symmetrical inversion because it just puts me in a really good spot for Shavasana. Take two more breaths here. And then we're gonna bend both of the knees, bring the soles of the feet down to the mat, Press the feet into the ground to lift the hips, slide your block out of the way, and prepare yourself for Shavasana. So I encourage you to just remove any props away from your mat if you would like. 
um, or you can bring your your um, knees together, keep the soles of the feet on the ground, and take a constructive rest. That's a nice alternative to classic Shavasana if you feel any low back discomfort. Uh, but from wherever you are, just find a position that feels nice and cozy, one that lets you relax. Start to let your body feel very supported by the ground beneath you. Know that it's safe to start turning off all of those muscles in the body that want to keep you active and rigid and ready for fight or flight. Just kind of release that. Shavasana is a safe space to let all of that go. Soften the muscles around your eyes, especially the muscles right between your eyebrows. Maybe let the belly soften. Let the hips soften. And if your legs are extended, just let both of your feet fall apart from one another naturally. If your knees are bent, trust that one knee will support the other and release that clenching in your hips. Let your awareness come back to your breath. And let your focus settle there. Shavasana. Start to welcome your awareness back into your body. Some little movements in your fingers and your toes, your wrists and your ankles. It may feel good to take your legs long and reach your arms ahead over your head. Just stretch like it's first thing in the morning. When that feels complete, maybe you bring both of your knees in towards your chest and just give your shins or hamstrings a little squeeze, a little rock. And as you're rocking, just let yourself rock towards one side and use your bottom arm as a pillow for your head. So maybe keep your eyes closed. Start to prepare for your yoga practice off of the mat.
We'll use our hands to press to an upright seat and find a cross-legged position with your hands joined together at the center of your chest. Thank you guys for joining me for practice this morning and just experimenting with the joy of flight. Pray that you take that strength and curiosity and humor with you into the rest of your day. Namaste. Namaste.